Hi, Mike Munsing here, and welcome to the Market Update. We've got a fair bit of information to cover, and I want to get as much value into the short time we have together, so let's get started. We'll talk firstly about market conditions. So uh, in the last 12 months, we've seen roughly a 10% change or a decrease in the median sale price from the peak to the trough. We do feel we're at a point of stabilization now where we're starting to see new buyers into the marketplace, feeling like it's a good time to buy, and some vendors that are coming into the marketplace now are pricing where the market actually is. And actually seeing some competition on properties that are being sold, which is a really big positive. The big change though is there's almost a 30% reduction in volume, and that means the amount of properties actually sold in the marketplace has gone down by one third. So the supply of property for sale is actually really reduced and may even actually help to keep the market stable or a very small slight increase as the year draws on. Days on market has certainly changed. Um, there's been a drift towards conservative selling techniques such as private sale or expressions of interest, which has seen auction numbers reduce. However, the auction numbers are still quite good. The best way to look at days on market is that you've roughly got a 50-50 shot at getting your price or better within the first 30 days on market. The average for the broad Maroondah marketplace at the moment, we're seeing property take somewhere between 50 odd days to sell through the marketplace and that's a lot to do with the conservative manner and just buyers maybe not having the fear of missing out that they had 12 months ago and perhaps some of the changes to the financing that we've seen is certainly implemented on that. The biggest winners, people upsizing their home is certainly the first one I can think of. It's a bit of a controversial one but hear me out on this. So if, if your property has dropped say 10% in value and you're looking to upgrade, now most people we speak to normally upgrade somewhere between 200 and 400,000 dollars higher in price compared to the property they currently own, when you actually work out if that property is reduced by 10% as well, you take into account the lower mortgage, the lower stamp duty, the, the current rates that are in a really good position and low right now, when you actually work it out, you're actually in a substantially better financial position today than you were previously in the last couple of years and you also got the added benefit of buying a property at the bottom end of the market and get to absorb all of that capital growth into the future as we go forward. The federal election is right on our doorstep. Now we're not going to be political here but we feel like we know the outcome is very likely to be a Labor government and they've announced two things that are related to real estate. One is the change to negative gearing on the 1st of January in 2020 and also a change to capital gains tax. So CoreLogic and uh, RP Data have done some research and some modeling on what they feel will happen. They're, they're predicting a bit of a sugar hit or a bit of a spike in demand, perhaps from those investors trying to put together some money and buy an investment property before the changes actually occur. And then predicting in 2020, the market might take a bit of a deep breath and try and figure itself out after those changes have actually been made. There's also been significant changes to the Landlords and Tenancies Act. So for those wannabe or people looking at buying an investment property or have investment properties currently right now, it's absolutely important that you're across these changes. They're fairly significant and they actually cover a really wide part of what it means to be a property investor. So from rental pricing to the bonds that the tenants play, pay, the way that they assess um, pets and the way pets can be used by tenants in the properties as well to general repairs and also more importantly notice to vacate. So close to 130 reforms have actually been put through the parliament and if you want some more specific information on how that responds to your property or your intentions, feel free to reach out and we can talk you through it in more detail. So what's hot right now? What you should be looking out for if you're an investor and got a bit of money put aside now is a great time to buy a potential subdivision or maybe do a bit of land banking. Make sure you buy them in good positions in school zones and close to train stations, particularly in the outer races. They're certainly where you're going to see some of the substantive capital growth. The lower end of the marketplace, little units, two bedroom units are also a really good buy at the moment as they've certainly come back in value a little bit and have good growth prospects into the future. Thank you for watching our market update video. As always, if you'd like to ask some specific questions We'll look for some further detail and how it impacts on your situation. Feel free to reach out directly, hit me up on the number below and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.